Hello, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be talking about how I scored a 99th percentile MCAT score and how I went from a, like, I think it's now like a 90th percentile MCAT score to a 99th percentile MCAT score. So I got a 515 uh, initially and then went to a 521. So added increased six points and for anyone who knows the scoring system and just everything about the MCAT, like I'm assuming if you're watching this video, then you do basically understand the basic concepts because you're probably a pre-med who is either currently studying for the MCAT or planning to study and take the MCAT or retake the MCAT. So. I'm just going to assume that you know everything, and if you don't, you know, feel free to Google this stuff up. But basically, 515 is not a bad score, and I don't want anyone watching this to feel like they need to retake their score if they score like 515 or below, or, you know, whatever below. Like, your score is your score. If you are proud of your score and it's going to get you to where you want to be, then own that score. Okay, that score, so I have a friend of mine who is a doctor from Egypt who gave me this wonderful quote that I will remember for the rest of my life. She was like, Tiani, they can take your numbers, your grades, but you can take your dreams. Like, just every time you start obsessing over... Ooh, okay something. Sorry, got distracted. Um, every time you start obsessing over your numbers, your whether it's your GPA, your MCAT score, your even like, you know, the number of followers that you have on Instagram or Facebook or something, or the number of likes that you get, you know, whatever, whatever numbers slash statistical advancement you're really looking for or searching for, it really means nothing, okay? But, like, it means nothing, yet it is very important in life because that is your gateway to what you actually want. You know, you don't care about the number itself. You care about the outcome that this number can give you. So that's how I approached studying for the MCAT. Instead of focusing on the number so much, even though I really didn't want that number, I focused on my end goal. I focused on what I wanted. Um, and if you are in like a similar page, if you have high aspirations, if you're super ambitious and want to get to that 99th percentile, if you want to get into those top 20 schools, then this is the video for you. If you're not interested in that and you are completely fine with a slightly mediocre-ish score and that's fine you know maybe that's just like what your priorities in life are and that's completely fine like nothing is better than the other then this video might not be for you okay I'm just gonna tell you right now um, so you don't waste your time but for those of you who really want to get crema the crop top this is for you and I know in my like previous videos, like if you want any life advice or pre-med advice, let me know and I'll make this video for you. But I decided to just make it anyway. So this is actually like filmed on the same day as those introduction videos. I just changed my shirt, you know, to make it look like it was a different day. Snazz it up a little bit. Shh. So, okay, I wrote them on, I wrote a little list on here, but I might just deviate from it anyway. Basically, a spiel of my story. I took my first MCAT uh, summer after my sophomore year of college. My boyfriend at the time broke up with me, like, I don't know, two, three weeks into studying for it, and I was in Spain at that time. Um, and I was, like, planning to go back home to study for it for another month, so my plan was, like, two-month period. One month in Spain while studying for a while, like, shadowing doctors, and then one month back at home just fall on studying for it. I was like, oh, I'll get, I'll have like, you know, the support of my boyfriend at the time. Like I thought we were doing well, you know, he was, he was pretty, a, a very great, you know, nice guy. And I was like, oh, wonderful. You know, I'm really, I'm really feeling it. And then breaks up with me. 
it was heartbroken. This was my first boyfriend, my first breakup, and came out of nowhere in my mind. Um, sort of out of nowhere. I mean, it always comes out of somewhere, and I think you you'll realize, you'll notice. Okay, this that, this is a that would be a video for another day, but you will always see these kinds of warning signs or these intuitive feelings that you try to ignore. Anyway, but it was basically out of the blue in my logical mind, <laughs> and I was devastated. Um, I really, I don't think anyone really realized how devastated I was, but I was absolutely like especially looking back I was like oh my god you were devastated girl you were so devastated like I was like who am I as a person and okay no it wasn't that bad but I was like what like everything I thought I knew was wrong and oh so much wonderful pieces of poetry came out of that you know great art comes from horrible sad sad situations <laughs> anyway it was like lonely first of all at home when i really started studying for really grinding and i only had like one month to grind and it was like crying every night listening to sad music all the time only had my mother there to somewhat try to comfort me and it's really it's really not enough you can't rely on this one person to comfort you and it just it wasn't enough right um I thought I would do okay though on that in cabs. Like I'm, you know, really studying for this. I'm, I'm doing it, but my mindset, my emotional state wasn't there, and I also didn't take physics in college yet, and yet expected to do so well in physics from just studying during the summer. You know, I had this very rush, rush mentality because I wanted to go straight into medical school without a gap year, even though like basically seventy percent of students especially at my school were doing it I was like no I'm not I am going straight through but you know you see how well that works out for one for one <laughs> um so that was that was that and I got a 515 I, after taking it, I was like okay there was so much that I didn't know and I basically ran out of time for the chem phys section and chem phys was my weakest point I got a 127 um, at that point, a 131 in psych, which was my strongest suit, and my other two scores were like 128, 129, you know, not, not too bad, but, uh, the chem phys was definitely not the best, like, my, my counselor was like, yeah, you should probably take a gap year, you know, one, because you're not a science major, and two, because, so I, I'm not a science major, so I didn't take enough science classes at the time. And two, because chem is not great. You know, if it were like 128 or above, more solid. 127, unfortunately, that one point really makes a difference. And I was like devastated again. But I thought 515 was like super good and not something that you needed to retake. Flash forward. It was always something like in the back of my mind. It was like, oh, annoying. Like not not what I wanted because it was below the median for all the schools I wanted to get into. Flash forward, day before, the, it was the last day of my junior year, and I was planning to go to Vietnam. I visited my the other health counselor at my school, pre-health counselor, love her, she's really, we really connect, and somehow our conversations turned into one about the MCAT. Don't even know why and like retaking the MCAT just it divulged into that and all of a sudden I find myself at a place where I'm like wow maybe I really should retake this test and I completely did not consider retaking it my whole time in college I did not it, my whole time you know that that year um which is probably better for me honestly in a mental state right but anyway, and it's really it's getting super dark. Hold on, give me a moment. Oh well, the PJs are coming out. Um. Anyway, so yeah, so that was that. She basically tells me that like my GPA, according to my GPA, um, they would expect that I got a higher MCAT score. I'm like, oh, <laughs> so sad. And like all the schools I wanted to get into were just 
and not very possible with a 515, unfortunately, which is super sad because 515 is great, you know, objectively. You, like, basically know your stuff, but they want more. It's competitive. Pre-med is competitive. Like, that is the truth. It is difficult. It is difficult to get through that juncture. So, anyway, that is my background story, and I think um, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about it because I think you need to know someone's background story before really going into their tips, you know, because we all come from different backgrounds and some of these tips can help you, some of them might not. Um, another, like, just general background is that I've, I've even though I'm a non-science major, I do have a lot of extensive science background. Um, I've taken a lot of AB science classes in high school. My parents, well, PJs are showing me yeah, My parents are both in science fields, STEM fields. So I'm not like, you know, wow, social science major, blah, 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 all through. Um, so everyone has their own situation. You know, we're all different. We all have our own situation. So you should really tailor your plans and everything to your own situation. But these are like some of the general tips I think could apply to like a more general group of people. 